Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is a condensed version of today's episode of Undisputed, handpicked with the best segments and discussions. Skip, Shannon, let's go. Welcome to Undisputed, live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Happy Monday, guys. Happy Monday. What? What's I mean, the, what? What's the ego maniac doing over there? What do? Do you like the Look, pink? I'm on camera in my salmon. You, I, I thought you would lie. I was like, oh. you know, but Skip go really like this. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to be. I'm glad you have that on today because you're in so much trouble. You need something to distract our audience. What you I'm, just did it. Way to go. Trouble, what I'm in trouble for? I like I it. I ain't doing it. It reminds me of my days you, in Boston. You like, oh, whoa, yeah. what? Oh, 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 Shane and Jen. Mm. On that thing again, Man. Skip. What'd you guys do this weekend? I don't know what Jenny did. It's too busy. Too much yeah, to watch. Oh, that's a, that's a good dodge. <laughs> what Jenny did. We have so much to talk about today. We have football. We also have actor John David Washington is here. But I feel like we got to start this with Tiger because that was pretty special to watch. Yesterday, he was amazing in the final round of the PGA Championship. Tiger had the lowest score on a Sunday in a major in his career, shooting a 64. He finished in second place at 14 under and even closed it with a birdie and a fist pump on 18. Oh, and by the way, Brooks Kepka actually won the championship with Tiger two shots back. Let's take a listen to Tiger after his round yesterday. I didn't know how many tournaments I'd play this year or if I'd even play. And so each tournament brought about its own challenges. And I didn't know what the number was going to be this year. I didn't know how many I was going to play. And so at the beginning of the year, uh, if you just said, yeah, I would have a chance, legit chance to win the last two major championships, I, with what swing? <laughs> uh, I didn't have a swing at the time. You know, I had no speed. Um, I didn't have a golf swing. I didn't have, uh, you know, my short game wasn't, wasn't quite there yet. You know, my putting was okay, but, you know, I, God, I hadn't played in two years. And so um, it's been a hell of a process this year. I'm, yeah, but I'm in, in charted, uncharted territory because there's no one's ever had a few spine hitting it like I'm hitting it. So I've had to try and figure this out on my own. And it's been really, really hard. It's a lot harder than people think. And I'm just, very pleased at what I've done so far and um, now I mean <laughs> to be part of the Ryder Cup conversation uh, going from where I've come from to now in the last year it's been been pretty cool. Well Skip from what Ooh. you saw yesterday <laughs> will Tiger win another major? <sighs> Allow me to remind everyone <laughs> it has been 10 years and two months since Tiger Woods won his last major championship. And since then, he has had not one, two, three. He's had four back surgeries, including spinal fusion that we just heard him refer to. And that was only a year and four months ago. He is now 42 years of age. So I have repeatedly said, sitting right here in this chair on Undisputed, I cannot ever see Tiger Woods winning another major championship. But, but. after what I saw <laughs> yesterday, I take that back. I stand corrected. I was wrong. After what I saw yesterday, which was nothing short of near miraculous, I do believe Tiger Woods will win another major championship. In fact, I believe he can win a couple of more major championships. He's at 14, Jack Nicholas 18, so he could get to 16 to the 18. I can't see him passing Jack, but I could see him winning two more over the next four or five years because I saw something on full display yesterday I have not seen for 10 years and two months. And that was Tiger's killer will. That's what made him most invincible during his run, which was the greatest run any golfer has ever had and may ever have in the history of golf. But yesterday, he once again drove the ball shockingly poorly. He missed nine of 14 fairways on a course with rough that was U.S. open, high and sticky and impossible to extricate your golf ball from. Nine of 14 fairways you missed and you still shot your best final round score of any of your 80 major championships. You shot 64. You made two bogeys and you shot 64. You left a birdie putt on the lip and you lift out a par putt and you still shot 64. It was just will. Hmm. He just willed himself back into contention. Three times he was within one shot of Brooks Kepka and the lead just on sheer will. 
willing iron shots that knock down the pin, willing escape shots, recovery shots that I just said, that's it, he's done. No, he's not done, he's back in business. Willing home putts, willing home approach shots. I, I've never seen such a display from Tiger, even in his great days, because he put himself in jail again and again and again and got out of jail again and again and again. Now, we saw him contend at the British Open. You and I talked about it. He got all the way to 10 on Sunday. He took the lead, and right on schedule, he folded. Because we've seen this happen again, he, again and again, he teases us and he tumbles because he doesn't trust himself, or at least he didn't, under big stage major championship pressure. But yesterday, every time I thought he was going to fold, he willed home another putt. And yesterday, he, he did something. We, his his four-round score, 266, was, was the best he's ever shot in a major championship. His 130 over the last two days, which is 66 and 64, that broke the PGA record for Saturday and Sunday score. He didn't lose yesterday. He just got beaten by what's right now the physically and mentally toughest competitor on this planet in the sport of golf. And that's Brooks Kepka, who went NFL on the PGA just the way he went NFL on the U.S. Open the last two years. He just flat out overpowered it. He looks like a linebacker. He's got quarterback's touch. That's hard to beat. That's mm -hmm. hard for Tiger to contend with because Tiger doesn't hit it nearly as far anymore as Brooks Kepka. Even when Tiger went to his irons off the tee, they weren't always straight. He, he's got to fix his driver, and this has been plaguing him now for about, really for about a dozen years straight. But I still believe with that will that I saw on display yesterday, that was the old Tiger. He finally flashed. He finally came back to life. That's the guy who's going to win a couple of more majors because I don't think Brooks Skepka can win them all from here on. I disagree with you, Skip. I'm not convinced that he can win for the very reason that you said you think he can is that, yeah, he putted the ball exceptional. He chipped the ball exceptional. Exceptional. But what has led him down over the past decade, Skip, that driver, when he needed to you said on the British Open, mm -hmm. had the lead on the back nine. And what did he do? Ping! Mm -hmm. What did he get up yeah, and do? At least at the British Open, you can hit your irons more because they'll run forever, but go ahead. But I look at hitting an iron off the tee as a drive. You just, no, didn't, you just didn't use the big, and that's what's let him down. You're, and, you're conceding to the field. Right. You're conceding a lot of length. Yep. And then what happened on seven, what did he do on 17? When he need to make it happen, what happened, Skip? Big four right. As, as Hank Haney, who wrote the book about Tiger Woods, called it the big miss. That was the title of that book, and that was the title of that round yesterday. That was a big miss. And we talked about it, Skip. I said, like, he's going to have to give himself a chance on mm -hmm. opening day. If you look at him, you look at Brooks Kepka. Kepka's at one under. Tiger's at even par. Okay, so that's a one-stroke lead. He goes 63. Tiger goes 64. So he starts out with a one-shot uh, one lead, and he gets the one-stroke, so that's the difference in the tournament, too. You, you could argue that, although if you look at the first, the front nine, the first nine holes that yeah. those two players played, mm -hmm. Brooks Koepka trailed Tiger Woods by four shots after right. their first nine holes, mm -hmm. each of theirs. But he, came, he bounced back strong with birdies on the back, and mm -hmm. Tiger went bogey, double bogey on, I think it was 11 and 12 on his back nine, and there was the difference. And then you look at Saturday, Skip. Mm -hmm. He has, what, 12, 14-foot putt for Eagle? Not only does he not get the eagle, he doesn't get the birdie. Skip, he, he parked it. He hadn't made anything all day, so he charged it, charged it four feet past, lipped it out, power lipped it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. the, the old Tiger, and you mentioned that killer wheel. The thing is now, guys don't fear that anymore, Skip. You know, Skip, I'm, I'm not sure about that. Did you I'm see? I'm not sure about that. I, I'm convinced now that Adam Scott and Justin Thomas, some of those guys, everybody except Kepka fears Tiger Woods still because, listen, he took over the golf course yesterday. It, it sounded like a St. Louis Cardinals baseball it home did, game. It, it did. It was craziness. It was. And, and I think it fueled Kepka because in his group, the last group, the, the gallery is meager because everybody's up following Tiger. But he and hears so it. You, you hear the roars. He whoosh, knows what's going on. Whoosh, yes. Whoosh. Just yeah. huge roars. And every time they post a score on Kepka's scoreboard in his group, People in that gallery go crazy. Mm -hmm. So it was a big Tiger, quote unquote, home game. But Kepka doesn't seem afraid, even though he's a fan. Of, he grew up a huge Tiger fan. Mm -hmm. 
huge Adam Scott fan, but he doesn't seem afraid of anybody. He seems emotionless. I think these guys that the guys that were not on tour when Tiger was in his prime, they didn't get an opportunity to feel to feel the full effect of what it's like to be on a course when Tiger's at his well, best. Well, Justin Thomas, who is really good right. right now, he said yesterday was the first time he'd experienced the Tiger roars mm. where you heard them and they were different. Right. They, they were so loud, they detonated across the whole yeah. golf course and it shook everybody up. Right. I thought Justin had a shot and he just, he just didn't fire. He just didn't. But you look at, you look at Kepka. He gets to 17. He goes 338 right down the middle of the fairway. That's the mm-hmm. difference, Skip. It's crushing. It, you, that used to be Tiger Woods. It, uh, when, hey, when, when he, he need he is Tiger of old. When he needed a big shot, when he yeah. needed a big drive, that's what Tiger could do. He could go 320 right in the middle of the green, game set match. And people are like, well, Tiger never shot 64. Skip, normally what happens when Tiger wins his majors. Tiger has the lead. So when you have the lead, you don't need to take these unnecessary risks in order to get you a 64, to get you a 63. He plays the course. Hey, I, if I have to par all the way through, boom, I win. I'm going to let you make the mistakes. Okay, Brooks Kepka, uh, you do you, Tiger. I'm going to be back here. I'm going to do my thing. I'm not going to get all caught up in the Tiger. Whoa! It says like the Kentucky Derby, you stand on the, and when that roar goes and the horses make that that final turn skip, mm-hmm. say so you can actually feel the roar of the crowd. Been I'm, there many times. I'm sure that's what it was like yep. yesterday because they had never seen, hadn't seen Tiger like this in a very long time. Coming home, he's charging. Guys, like, man, whatever, Tiger, we're not worried about you, Skip. I'm not convinced that he can hit that driver consistently enough over four days. And that's the difference. Can he go low occasionally? Sure. But does he leap? He left himself too much damage. Because remember, Skip, he went even par. He went four on the next day. He was already six strokes back. Mm. So by the time he head to the weekend, he's six back. He has to go low in order to have a chance. And then in order for him to go low and have a chance, he has to pray they come back to him. Mm. Just remember what Brooks Kepka did with the pressure on and Tiger on the prowl. What did he do? He goes birdie, birdie on 15 and especially on 16. It's a long par three. It's 248 yards. I'd have to hit my driver on that and yeah. probably still not have a chance. <laughs> Most people hitting driver with three wood. Yeah. And he hits four iron to seven feet and makes it and it's just game over. Mm-hmm. It's too good. It's a bogey hole. It, mm-hmm. It's a hole you could you could really get in quick trouble, especially under pressure. And he just said, no, watch this. Mm-hmm. It's one of the great pressure shots mm-hmm. you'll yes. ever see. Because yes. he's got Adam Scott breathing down his neck right. in his same final twosome, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And Adam Scott did wind up on 17 with about 11-foot putt for a birdie that could have made it at least interesting going to 18. He'd been right. shot back. But Brooks Kepka is just too good right now. And remember... Brooks Kapka missed the Masters last th- this past yeah. year, this year, yeah. because he had a wrist, wrist injury, injury that he thought was maybe going to be career-threatening to him. He missed four months of sitting on the couch, and he talked about, you know, it's, it's almost like one guy's got spinal fusion, but the other guy's got a wrist injury. And right. as you know, trying to swing a golf club, if your wrist is completely wrong, if yeah, you can't it, get it right, you're, you're just done. Right. And he wasn't sure he was ever going to be right, and then he bounced back to do that. And remember, Brooks Kepka has been really good in the Masters. He's played it the previous three years, and he went 33rd, 21st, and 11th. So he's, he's just, you, you know he's what's trending coming. in the right direction. He's trending, <laughs> and Tiger's trending in the right direction. And now we have to wait all the way to next April oh, to see the showdown because this could be a showdown between these two. But I'm, I'm with you on the driver point. My only point about Tiger is since he, he burst onto the scene because of his drive. Yes. He was the longest. We've longest never seen anything seen. like it. He's nope. hitting it off the planet. They're having to tigerize golf courses. Tiger proof. Including, <laughs> including Augusta National. Yes. We got to move the tees back, which is probably not the smartest thing to do because it just actually increased his advantage. Right. The farther you move the tees back, you ought to actually move them but, forward so that it makes it harder to hit the, hit the to driver. Hit the driver, opposite. right? Mm-hmm. But anyway, they went the other way. Tiger proof going backwards. And yet, 
He started to get wayward with the driver, and it didn't matter. I remind you at Torrey Pines when he won his last major in the U.S. Open on a quote-unquote broken leg. He had a, a stress fracture mm-hmm. in his, his uh, thigh and in his, his, his uh, shin, right? shin, yeah, in his shin bone, I believe it was. But the point was he's hitting his driver all over the lot in San Diego at Torrey Pines. Mm-hmm. The rough wasn't nearly as high as right. this rough was. But he can get away with it because of his escape artistry. And I saw it on full display yesterday. It's just will. He just wills golf balls out of trouble into contention. Well, the thing is now, Skip, whereas before when Tiger was in his prime and say like the first uh, 10, 12, 11 years of his career, he was one of one or two golfers that could overpower the golf course. They got 10, 12 guys now that can overpower the golf course. Yeah. You got DJ who played terrible. DJ can go 375. Kepka. You got all these guys. Justin Thomas not as long, but they'll. Yes, he is. But he, he is. Trust me. But they hit size. it. Whew. You know what, Skip? They hit it straight. Mm. And Tiger might have to concede. You know what? Instead of trying to go 315, let me go 290 and keep it in the fairway. You going 300 and putting it in the rough. What good is that? Yeah, I know. You know, this drives me crazy about <laughs> Tiger with his driver because he has such high golf IQ. I saw Paul Azinger, our, our golf analyst, at, mm-hmm. at a Fox event about three months ago. Yeah. And we sat down and talked. And I said, why can't Tiger hit his driver? And he said, I don't know. It's the most baffling phenomenon in the history of golf that a guy this good with every other club in his bag mm-hmm. can't hit his driver straight because he missed yesterday way left, as we saw on nine, yeah. when he escaped with right. a nine iron out. He, he got a break on nine because it was over on sort of the mm-hmm. beaten down path. And then to your point, on 17, he hits a big balloon because he's so right. late to the ball. It's right. big balloon to the right. So he can miss way left or way right. Is with he overcompensating? It's just, it's, it's not that hard to hit a driver right. straight if you're as good as Tiger Woods. But for some reason, I think he's got a mental block. And remember, he had to overcome a chips yip mental block. Right. Remember when he couldn't chip yeah. the ball? Right. He would, mm. He'd be, you know, five yards off the green and chip it yeah. ten yards over the green? Yes. Really? Yeah. But you got all these guys now that can that can overpower the golf ball. Jordan Speed Skip, he wins. Hell, he can't not drive me. Nope. And I I, no, I, I I don't know about that. Well, I mean, he can't not drive my man. I don't know where mine's gonna go. Mm. I mean, he knows exactly where his is going to go. But I would like to set up a long dry contest between you and Jordan Speed because my money would be on Speed. Skip, yeah, you about to get your boy? Uh, just just on technique. It, the technique would I'm be. I'm telling you, Skip. I'm real, you know, these abs, I mean, not, you know, I, oh I just blow them out, Skip, because they're real tight right now, so that yeah. they ain't going to cause me. But, mm. you know, okay. I might eat a couple of donuts or something, let my abs get lax, and then, mm. Mm. Three, 305. Really? Yeah, 305. Now, your brother, I would give a shot. Oh, no, no, my Spur. brother, I drive Jordan Speed. No. I, I, I know he would. <laughs> he would. But that, that's what concerns me, Skip. He play. I can tell you this, I think he feels better about this tournament than yep. any tournament that he's played, even the ones that he's won in, say, the last three years, because this gave him hope to go 66, 64, and he's never done that before, even in his absolute prime, Skip. That's like, you know what? Hey, I can really do something. But, Skip, he got to go back in that. He got to work on that driver. Mm-hmm. You got to give yourself a chance. The thing is, from coming behind, when you come from behind and you're making everything, you got to hope the other guys falter. You look at New England, Skip, when they came from 25 points down, yeah, they scored points, but it also took Atlanta to do some things mm-hmm. that helped New England along the way. Well, he's not getting any help because Kepka was like, I ain't, I'm not helping you. Mm-mm. And the next thing you know, he goes 66. Kepka could have easily gone par. He could have easily gone 60. Skip, he went 66. So it wasn't like, you know, t- well, ooh, Tiger went 64 and Kepka held on. Mm-hmm. He went 66. Mm-hmm. But it took, two bir- it took 15 and 16 birdies yeah. to get down to 66. But when have you ever seen someone do what, do what he did when the crowd is in an uproar, when it was in a frenzy? Skip, this is the World Series. It felt like, I'm sure it felt like it was the Cardinals playing the World Series, how ruckus the crowd was. They're roaring and shuffling around and the cameras everybody's, man, you see Tiger, they, they flip the board and he looks up there like, whoa, that, that's Tiger. You're like, and? Yep. Guess what? Trophy coming home with me. Mm. All the other guys would have folded. Sir, let that have been Sergio 10 years ago, Skip. Oh. Let that have been any of the guys 10 years ago. Hey, it's over. Let it have been anybody now except for this guy. This guy's got cold-blooded assassin in him. He's got emotionless. He's got killer will of his own. It's different than Tiger's because it's not emotion-driven. Mm-hmm. It's just methodical. It's 
almost like hitman. You know, like he he just knows exactly what he needs to do to hit you. Yeah. And and he hits you when you don't even see it coming. But Tiger Woods has some intangible in him that we have rarely seen in sports before in any sport. And that's the intangible with which he dominated golf for that sort of four year stretch oh, in yeah. there from like ninety nine to two thousand two ish, right yeah. in there. Mm-hmm. It was unbelievable because he owned golf psychologically. And I saw that come back out yesterday. He's just going to have to deal with Brooks Kapka. But you know and I know golf is weird. There are tournaments yeah. where you just don't play well. You're, the course doesn't fit your eye. True. I'm going to give Tiger a shot because I didn't think he'd have a shot at Bell Reeve. It didn't seem to set up right for him. He should have won yesterday. It's, it, it will be underrated just how great, how clutch Brooks Kepka was yeah. on 15 and 16 to hold off Tiger Woods. Because a lot of guys, I don't think Justin Thomas would have held him off in the same situation. I don't think Dustin Johnson would have held him off in the same situation. It, it took this guy, who his girlfriend runs up to him at the end when he wins, and he's just kind of like, hi. <laughs> then his mom was there, and he didn't even know his mom was, had come. And he was like, hi. Yeah. He was focused. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's I focused. did this. Yep. So. Not surprised. Okay, okay, Scale. We go, well, now we get we get the, what? The FedEx Cup. Yeah. We get the Ryder Cup. Hopefully he makes that. And I then we get the big show. that golden in the Ryder Cup. Then we get the match play mm-hmm. between him and Phil for 10 mm-hmm. mil. Mm-hmm. That, that's a joke to me. What do you mean that's a joke? Yeah. Who you got? Well, I got Tiger. Oh. Phil has always played well against him, but Phil doesn't look good to me now. Phil's let himself go way out of shape. No, hey, he missed the cut. It, it's PGA. just something, it's something about Phil be making up his money on, on, on money through the Wednesdays, playing, playing, it, playing, it. playing everybody else, taking their money. Well, maybe if it's just gambler versus gambler, maybe you give Phil a shot. Well, it's like different. Tiger. You know what it, what it would be different? If each guy had to put up his own ten million, yep. you know what I'm saying. Well, this is sponsors' money, yeah. so it's just like a tournament. Skip, this is tournament golf to them because, yeah, I want to win, but it's not my ten million. You got to put a man to the test with his own money to get the true test to see what's really going I agree. on. So, bottom line to this, I'm still amazed by the Tiger effect. I'm a golf nut, and I, I've always watched with or without Tiger. But he has once again put golf back on the national sports yeah. map in a way that it was not without Tiger. It just was not. You watch golf, but you're not planning your day around Brooks Kepka. No. You're not planning your day around Jordan Spieth or Justin Thomas or Rory McIlroy. This guy. Okay, I, I will, but a lot of most people won't. The hardened, hardened golfer the, they will. will not. The, but yeah. Tiger Woods will make you, if you got something planned, hey, I'm going to be a little late today. Yep. I that's think a what, lot of people were a little late. Yesterday. That's what mm-hmm. that guy mm-hmm. will do. He will do it. And it's better for the game to have him back yeah. because that was the most excited I've ever been watching some golf. Okay, <laughs> will the Broncos regret not getting Kirk Cousins? And uh, why are mm. the Jags suspending their own players? Mm. We'll discuss all that next. No mercy. Kirk Cousins and Case Keenum were both in new uniforms for the preseason debut Saturday. Cousins only played one series, but he made a great first impression, going a perfect four for four, including a touchdown pass to Stephon Diggs. And, you know, the new Bronco, Keenum only completed one pass for five yards in the loss for Denver. Shannon, who will have the better season, Cousins or Keenum? First Cousins. He's a better player. He's a better player. He's a better quarterback. We have a... No matter what you think of him, is he overrated? Is he overpaid? He's a better player than Case Keenum. We have a three-year body of work on Kirk Cousins. We do? Case Keenum has been a career backup. Normally, career backups in year six or seven all of a sudden don't get better and lead teams to Super Bowls. That, that, that doesn't happen. Oh, now, we, now, Nick Foles, we're talking about three or four games. That's one thing. You're talking about from start to finish, and that's what the Broncos are asking Case Keenum to do. Mm. Now, they had an opportunity to possibly get uh, uh, first cousins, but they realized the price was a little bit more than what they wanted to spend. Mm-hmm. Three years, $84 million, fully guaranteed. Why didn't you do it? Huh? Hey. Huh? You love him. Hey, man. Hey, Skip. My you money, run the Broncos. My money jump funny. You, you, you got your Broncos. <laughs> that's your Broncos colors today, right? Yeah, I got the blue on, Skip. No, no, no. Kirk was going to cost a little bit more than we cared to spend oh, at okay. that point in time. Yeah. The bigger problem is, yeah, there are some concerns for Keenum, mm. but the backup packs the lynch. 
Skip, at this point in time, hell, I'll take a former Attorney General Loretta Lynch to oh. play backup quarterback oh. over Paxton Lynch. Boy, now that was a reach. <laughs> you know, hey, Skip, at some point in time, we got to come to the realization. Mm. Mm. He can't play. He just can't play. Dude can't play dead in a horror movie, Jenny. Mm. And it, who picked him? I don't know who picked him, Skip. Mm. That is I don't mean. know who picked him. I think you try to get me in trouble. Skip, I used to I used to go to Denver, go to this certain restaurant and eat. You try to revoke my meal privilege. I, I'm gonna revoke your parking pass. That's what I'm gonna get. I'm after that John, parking pass. John. You're gonna have to pay your way into mile high. Look, he he's he he, he missed on Brock, yeah. missed on Paxton. Well, I'd say. I mean, the the, the, the uh, where do you put Trevor Simeon in there? That's he was a seventh round draft okay. pick. All right, all he right. Skip, he would he's a great backup. You look at him when he came in after uh, first cousins, mm. he was dealing. Mm. But when you ask him to three or four games, Trevor Simeon's your guy. Till the starter comes back, mm. he's your guy. But you're not asking him to win on a long term basis. Mm. But back to to our original. Kirk Cousins is a better player. Mm. Skip now. Pro Football Focus or was it Bleacher Report say they had the number one receiving core. Mm -hmm. So now you factor that in with Dalvin Cook. Let me tell you how good Dalvin Cook was. Before he got hurt, he was going to be Offensive Rookie of the Year. He was. Not Alvin Kamara. Mm -hmm. Now Kamara came on like gangbusters. It would have been close. It would have been close. Yeah. But now you get Cook back mm -hmm. who can do a lot of the things that Kamara could do. I, I thought Latavius Murray looked pretty Latavius good. Latavius Murray yeah. it can run the ball. Yeah. So you look at Thielen, you look at D Diggs, you look yeah. at Kyle Rudolph, you look at Cook, you look at Murray. The question is, can that offensive line hold up? Mm. That's going to be defensively, Skip, they loaded. They can come get you. The Rams' defense can come get you. Mm -hmm. uh, the Eagles' defense can come get you. Mm -hmm. They also have offense that can put points on the board. Yeah. So when you look at it, say – Eight of the top 10, 10 of the top 12 teams reside in the NFC. Mm. The one thing you don't, and, and most of these can come get your quarterback. Mm. So can Kirk get the job done? Sure. Mm. But out of those two, this, mm. is this a question? Hmm. I don't even think it's a huge it is question. A question. No, yes. no, no, it's not. It is a question because Jenny asked it, and Jenny Taft from Minneapolis, Minnesota is not going to like my answer I'm to this question. I'm not going to like it. Because... I'm going to completely throw out everything I saw on Saturday night. Kirk Cousins has been, for the last five years, the biggest tease in all of sports, an even bigger tease than Tiger Woods because Kirk Cousins can't really back it up when he needs to. He will. Kirk Cousins is now the most overpaid quarterback in the history of pro football. <laughs> Kirk Cousins will not have quite as good a year this year as Case Keenum has for the Denver Broncos. And obviously it helps when you have Diggs and Thielen. You'd say that's advantage, slight advantage, at least maybe big advantage, Minnesota. Well, Damaris is still there and Emmanuel's yeah. still there. They're pretty good. Mm -hmm. Still pretty good, right? And that yeah. Cortland Sutton that I wanted the Cowboys to right. draft, you got him, right? Yeah. Is he pretty good? I don't know. I think he could be they, really they, good. They've been raving about I him know. in practice. I know it. Devontae Booker carrying the ball? I don't know. Is he Dalvin Cook? No. No. But my question They're is... They like Freeman. Royce Freeman had a big run. They like did. him. Mm -hmm. Okay. My question is, I wonder how much Case Keenum helped Diggs and Thielen be Diggs and Thielen. Maybe you're underestimating just how good he really was last year. Maybe they didn't make him. Maybe he helped make them. I see a Case Keenum who has more moxie than Kirk Cousins. I, I see a, a, a Case Keenum with more clutch guts than, than Kirk Cousins has. Who created the Miami Miracle? I mean, sorry, the Minnesota Miracle, not the Miami Miracle. Who, who did that? Who made that throw? It was Case. It was Case Keenum. Mm -hmm. And it was a really good do you throw. Know, do he had to pick who, which way am I going to go? Am I going to go underneath the Rudolph or am I going to go to my third receiver up? The but let me, ask, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do you believe that very throw? That Kirk couldn't have made it. I not, believe not, that, in, uh, uh, not at that point. Oh, so you believe under, under the rest, under the rest, he couldn't have made that throw. So I'm gonna have to bring out, haul out my favorite stats again. Oh, okay. Kirk Cousins, as the starting quarterback of the Washington Redskins, was 26, 30, and one. That's four games under 500. Yes. Against his arch rival, the Dallas Cowboys, in their biggest games. Trust me, I lived in the middle of that rivalry for years and years. It's a big deal. In Dallas, and especially, it's an even bigger deal in Washington. And Kirk Cousins went 1-6 and six against the Cowboys. Kirk Cousins lost all four home games he played against the Dallas Cowboys. He lost all four games he played against Dak Prescott. 
and you gave him twenty-eight million a year guaranteed? Seriously, really? So what? So, what, so but look, look what at, he's up against, Skip. Look, look at the guy that he's across from. Uh, he's still better than Case Keenum. Uh, if he overpaid, Skip, we, we're so, not debating that. Yeah. So last year, Case Keenum had a QBR of seventy-one. That's pretty great. Yeah. That was second in the league last year. You, you got to be. You, you got to have some game to to have a seventy-one. I I get it. Diggs and Thielen, I get it. You, Rudolph, yeah, Dalvin right. Cook for right, a little right. while. A little while. 71. Kirk Cousins last year had a 51 QBR. That's 20 points higher for Case Keenum. And, by the way, that finished 16th in the NFL for Kirk Cousins, and it trailed Mariota and Bortles and McCown and Tyra Taylor. I, I don't know. If you, don't you got mind, $28 million off let, that? Let's just what say, are you doing? Let's just say for the sake of argument, they would have taken Thielen and Diggs away and Kyle Rudolph would have been hurt like Pierre Garçon, like Deshaun Jackson, like Reed, like they got hurt. Mm-hmm. And his offensive line was in shambles. Which, what, what do you think you Case Keenum would have done? Because that, that that's, that's what, that's what uh, uh, he was up against. <sighs> think about it. At every turn, Washington did everything they could to make sure this young man failed. Mm. We're going to get rid of Deshaun Jackson. Why? Uh, I don't know, but it seems like a good idea. Mm. We're going we gonna to get rid of Pierre Garçon. Why? I don't know. Seems like a good idea. Mm. Reed can't stay healthy. He's a top two or three tight end in all of football when he's healthy and on the field. But for whatever reason, Skip, he can't get there and stay there. Mm. Offensive line, I mean, the dude went, went to Seattle. He beat Seattle in Seattle with four backups. Mm-hmm. He'll he have those that. games occasionally. He and then beat, in the end, he just he, leaves you flat and he, he beat He beat the – he came out to L.A. and he beat the Rams. Mm-hmm. Like Lost a, twice to the Cowboys. Okay, I, I get that, Skip. It, we're not debating whether or not – is $28 million too much, mm-hmm. too much for Kirk Cousins? Maybe. But the, the Minnesota says – they're saying to themselves, we have a Super Bowl caliber offense, defense, and special mm-hmm. teams. The only position that's holding us back – Mm-hmm. It's quarterback mm. because there's no way if you thought that guy, Case Keenum, could take you to the Super Bowl, you could have had him for $10 million per year cheaper. Mm. You could have had him for three years at $50 million guaranteed mm. as opposed to three years, 84, fully guaranteed for Kirk. Mm. So they're telling – they see these guys. They saw Case every day in practice. Saw him in preseason, saw him in OTAs. And they say, you know what? This is as far as he can take us. Mm. This is the end of the line. Yeah, people make mistakes in this league every day, and that's a mistake. No. It's okay to say Case Keenum isn't quite good enough to take us all the way home. Well, what the hell are we playing for? Yeah, but it's not okay to say Kirk Cousins can take First us cu- over the top. Over. Really? Over. What have I told you about him from the very start? He's an under talented overachiever that's what he is and he's never quite sure of himself he gets a little skittish in the pocket he gets a little wide-eyed the higher the stakes the more likely he is to make mistakes he is a mistake maker case keenum is a play maker he'll make occasional mistakes but he makes more plays than mistakes kirk can throw it he can wing it man yeah and then when you least expect it he just Implodes. They, they, implodes. they have to be the favorite. Mm. Skip that. Lo- I mean, they're loaded. Look at that defense. They're loaded. <laughs> loaded. loaded. <laughs> it all comes down to the quarterback. Yes. Nobody in the National Football League has more pressure on him this year I'll, than that guy. I'll agree. Kurt, I'll agree. Kurt Cousins. Well, he's I mean, go- Kurt Cousins. <laughs> Just Kurt, a quick little Kurt. RK. First of all, no. He has the most pressure for the next three years mm. because all this team is really tied up. Everybody on defense is signed for an extended period of time. Mm. They tied up Diggs. Rudolph is still in the contract feeling. Mm. So, no, no, no. He's just not under pressure this year. Oh, as long as he's there mm. because they got bar, they got all these other guys tied up. Oh, oh, he's on immense mm-hmm. pressure. So, let's look at Minnesota's first five games, shall we? He's going to yeah. bring that up. So, <laughs> they start easy. at home with the 49ers. I'm going to give – Kirk Cousins a big game there. I think he might have a big splash, and Minnesota says, Super Bowl, here we come. Mm -hmm. And we'll have a whole week here on Undisputed of Kirk Cousins. You're going to try to shoot it down. No, I won't. I'll just sit over here and just be quiet. No, no. Smile. Let me tell you what you'll do, Skip. Mm -hmm. He'll throw for 450 Mm -hmm. yards, have four touchdowns, and you'll bring up, he was 0-4 against my Cowboys. Mm -hmm. That's what you'll do. I know you. 1-6. Okay. (laughs) The next week. 
Kirk Cousins has to play Aaron Rodgers at Green Bay. I think that's a big L and a big disaster. Oh, oh, now you like Aaron Rodgers all of a sudden. I just, I just don't like Kirk Cousins. It's not even- and then the next week they get the Bills back home, and I think it's a bounce back game for Kirk Cousins. It'll be pretty good, and they'll be two and one. Hey, Super Bowl, here we come. Then they have to go to the Rams on a Thursday night. Big L, big disaster coming. And then they have to go to the Eagles. Big L, big disaster for Kirk Cousins. And all of a sudden, you're looking, Jenny, at two and three in the first five games. That's no good. You know what? Skip Skip does a lot, just like players do. Because when the schedule come out, the players be looking like, oh, man, we should get a win here, Mm. get a win there. But here? I don't don't know about that that one. Mm. We should get. So, now let's look at the Case Keenum schedule in the first five games. Your Broncos. Yes. You're having to root against your Broncos because you're rooting for Kirk Cousins. I ain't rooting for, hold on, no, I'm yes, not you rooting. Are. You're backed into a corner once again. No, I'm not rooting for You are for in it. big trouble because this is five weeks. It goes like this for Case Keenum and your Broncos. Seattle at home, I think they win that game. Raiders at home, it'll be a big test for John Gruden. Rivalry right? game, okay. division game, I yes. Know, but I got Denver winning that okay. game. Then at Baltimore, I don't know. That's kind of a 50-50 game. Yeah. I, I could see with the little quarterback controversy mm. brewing over here in Baltimore, yes. Fluco. I could I could see Denver stealing that game. Then they come home, play Kansas City on a Monday night. Huge division game. I don't know. I could see Case Keenum winning that game against the kid who's Mahomes who's now playing It is very, State. very important for the Broncos to get off to a great start in the first month because, as you mentioned, I know. three of their first four games are at home, mm-hmm. which means on the tail end, the last month of the mm-hmm. season, three yeah. out of four will probably mm-hmm. be, be on the road. Game number five is Jets at home. Sam Darnold probably be the quarterback. I, I kind of like Case Keenum. Is it possible Denver could get off to a 5-0 and start while Kurt Cousins is 2-3? and three? That would not look good for the Minnesota but Vikings. Even, but even – you have to realize, Woo. Skip. Or me. What, what or is you. <laughs> Does not what, look what, what is history and what does averages say about Case Keenum? History says he's average. His record says he's history average. History says 71 last year in QBR for the Minnesota That ain't Vikings. no history. That's one uh, year. Uh, well, history says Minnesota miracle. That's what it says. You know what? Know. So you going to take one play? I, one, I'm taking one year. You know what? You are. You know stop. what? I think you're backpedaling. In that risk. I think you're afraid. On that, Thanksgiving, on that Thanksgiving Day game, uh, who was that? Stoner that had that great game. They ended up beating Washington. He came in and they won like 24 23. Mm hmm. That's, which, which game are you talking about? It was like uh, a Thanksgiving Day game, Washington, back in the 70s. Oh, back in the 70s? Yeah, Clint Stoner. Wasn't it, wasn't Clint Longley. It? Clint Longley. Oh. That's what it was. Yeah, Clint Longley. Oh, okay. Clint Longley. One game, Skip. Hmm? One game. That's what he's known for. Case Keenum, he'll forever be known for the Minnesota yeah. Miracle. Then Clint Longley made the mistake of sucker punching Roger Staubach in the next training camp, and Roger took him right outside and shut him up. And that was the last we heard of Clint Longley. I mean, that, yeah. I mean how you sucker punch somebody the man didn't turn around and beat you up? Well, he just, that's what I said. Staubach beat him up. Uh, he did more than beat him up. Well, Cousins and the Vikings yeah. are back in action on Saturday when they host the Jaguars. No mercy. Speaking of the Jags, they've suspended mm. defensive back Jalen Ramsey and defensive end Dante Fowler for one week each for violating team rules. Fowler was suspended because of a fight with a teammate at practice yesterday, and Ramsey was suspended because of his reaction on social media to a reporter who recorded Fowler's fight on his phone. Ramsey tweeted, at the Jags reporter, quote, Philip Heilman, you know, you messed up, right, LOL? If y'all want war, we've got some for y'all, and I know the rest of y'all. You know who you are, are going to read this too, so just so you know, hashtag lame-ass reporters. And Ramsey added, quote, I'm always going to take up for my teammates because I know what type of men and players they are for real. Love my dogs. If you don't like it, oh well, God bless. Shannon, were these suspensions fair? No. And as I tweeted at Jalen Ramsey last night, only the president of the United States can mm. attack the media, both publicly, with no repercussions, Kel Bailey. Mm. So you're, but you're still saying it's not fair you got no, suspended. Whoa, no, because here, my, my thing is, Skip, look, I get it. And I get what Jalen is saying, is Jalen's like, and what players are having to learn the hard way, the media is not your friend. Skip, when they have those open, they have that 10 minutes before practice, and they're out there filming, and they have right, like the end of once practice ends, they let them back in, they start taping again. So anything that they get, they feel is fair game. They don't, you didn't tell them that they figure anything then is fair game. So it's not off the record. They're not on your team. Exactly. 
that is going to get skip. If I just shoot and they go and pat and go or they doing some drill and walk through, nobody want to click on that. Mm -mm. Nobody wants to see that. But if I tell you there's a fight going on between two defensive players yep. at the Jags, mm -hmm. now all of a sudden that's going to be news, going to be picked up all around the country, yep. and it's going to get clicked on. Plus the fact Jalen Ramsey, he turns and he sees they're filming. He's like, man, cut that camera off. Now, could he have handled it better? Sure. But if I'm Jalen Ramsey, they're like, hey, don't get all upset. Because <clears throat> guess who they want to talk to on the defense every Sunday, Skip? Mm -hmm. Guess who they want to talk to during the week? Jalen Ramsey. Oh, my boy's here. My boy's here. I can jump mm -hmm. next week. Mm -hmm. That's how you do them. Um, mm -hmm. You. I think he does that occasionally. Jalen, you can't. Not you, available. Yeah. You can't, you can't do what the, 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 the yeah. big guy does. You can't. Mr. K Mr. Khan, down to see, I believe this is all Tom Coughlin. Because we know Tom Coughlin is overreaction when it comes to discipline. He ain't won one game. I'm going to do it for a whole week. That's kind of been his MO. Now, it's been reported they had 11 straight days of padded practices. Temples again. Yeah, skip it. Jacksonville, you know, Florida, South, you know, North Florida. It's real hot down there. It's real hot because it's not very far <laughs> from where you grew up. It's not very far. It's mm -hmm. about 90 minutes from where I yep. grew up. Skip, it's real, real hot. Mm -hmm. And it's Skip muggy. It's and you in pads. Yeah. And the temperature of, ooh, like, man, I don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. Somebody said something I ain't like. Man, what you talking about, bro? Okay, let's do this. I'm, I'm yeah. tired of your mouth. You be talking the whole practice. <laughs> Normally, we don't see, Skip. Normally, we don't see. Offensive players go at offensive players. Defensive players go at defensive players. Normally in training camp, it's vice versa. So this is, this is unknown. Mm -hmm. But Jalen made the mistake of thinking that Jacksonville media, Jacksonville Jaguars, we're one. No, the media's here. You're there. They're going to do what they do. And, but I do think that one week was far too long. Now think about this, Jenny. Mm-hmm. We're holding NFL players to a higher standard than we hold the very guy, mm. the president of the United States. We that, hold right? him, hold them to a higher standard. Can he be than suspended him. for a week? No, no, no. no. Well, if he were, let me Give skip, us a break. put it like this here, Skip. If he were suspended every time he took a shot at the media, he would have no more time in office. Mm. He'd be done. So, I disagree with you on this one. After I saw the first tweet from Jalen, mm -hmm. I liked it. The tweet about, I got my players, I'm going to always right. have my players back. Sure. Then all of a sudden he goes cut deeper and he basically says, media, you want to go to war? We got war for you here. And then lame ass reporters. No, that's, that's a little too far. Mm -hmm. And remember who runs this organization now, Tom Coughlin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah. He's about as old school disciplinarian Mm -hmm. as you can get. Mm -hmm. I thought he let Odell run a little amok occasionally, right? Mm -hmm. he, he could have sat him down during that game right. with Josh Norman, but he just let him go right. until he went completely over the edge. But still, Tom Coughlin is trying to bring some new order and discipline to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mm -hmm. I thought the second tweet was just a little too far, and to suspend him just for a week during the preseason is not all that bad as a learning experience, as a grow-up experience, because let's, let's look quickly at Jalen's background. In high school in the Nashville area, he, he was a superstar football player and track man. Yes. He, he shattered the Tennessee State long jump record when he, I think he was a junior when mm -hmm. he shattered it, but he also threw the shot and he ran the 100, 200, and the 400. You know from your track days, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> that there, is, right? That's exceptional. That's exceptional. He was a five star recruit and he was the first cornerback, true freshman cornerback at Florida State to start every game since time. Time. Deion right. Sanders. Well, that's pretty great. That's, that's, you know? And they've yeah. had some good ones come up out of there. I would say. So he's the fifth overall pick in the draft, which is pretty great for a cornerback. Mm -hmm. And his second year in the league, he not only makes the Pro Bowl, last year he made first team all pro. Mm -hmm. That's big time. Yes. So they need him to be a mature, a maturing leader of this football team. So I thought it was time just to send a little message. And I think this is a little message. It's not like he's going to miss just a call, real game. Skip, just call him in and say, Jalen, you know, we can't have that. Because but we see attacks on the media. You know, the media is the enemy of the state. Yep. Now, what, what I mean, lame, lame ass media or enemy of the people. Now, which is worse? The constant assault that we see every day 
or this. And I get, like I said, Skip, I'm Don't not... compare him to the president. Is that what you're still doing? Ooh. Well, come, you can't do that. That's what I'm... That's okay. the, think about that, what you're saying, Skip. Right, but he's a member of a football team, and they're just trying to do business the correct way. They're trying to handle <laughs> themselves correctly because image is everything in the National Football League, and it's not a great look for the Jaguars to be going to war with the media. Skip, when he says he's going to war, he, you know what that means. Okay, but We're going to shut it down. We're not going to... tweet something, it's... It's forever. You know, it just sits there. Yeah, we know. Print. When you tweet no, stuff, no, it's forever. No, That's exactly. You making my point, Skip. Okay. When you tweet stuff, Jenny, it's forever. Because we know we, lo we, mm. Skip, we love tweets. Tweets are documented. But here's the thing, Skip. Look, I get what Jay, and I'm not, see, I'm not trying to excuse him of what he did. And I understand he made the mistake of thinking Jacksonville media, Jacksonville Jaguars were one. The Jags and the media are separate. They get this 10-minute footage before. They get anything once practice is open. Mm -hmm. They feel it's fair game. It's kind of like you having a conversation. If I'm having a conversation with a reporter, if I'm just talking and I don't tell him it's off the record, everything that I tell him for the most part is going to be on the record. It's going to be in, in print or he's going to repeat what I said. That's true. Well, that's not off the record. That's open practice. Yeah. If he shot that through the peephole, that's one thing, Skip. That's but that true. wasn't shot through a people. That was at an open practice. And like I said, Jalen, just talk it up as a you lesson. You realize Jalen's had issues going back and forth with not only this reporter, but the whole Jacksonville media yeah. for two years now. Mm -hmm. And the same reporter had tweeted earlier, and Jalen took exception with it, that he got beaten in a camp drill by DJ Chark, the, the rookie from yeah. LSU. It happened. And Jalen was not happy that he tweeted about it and tried to disclaim it a little bit. Well, you don't. Well, really you're not. First it. of all, you're not supposed to be tweeting about stuff like that as a reporter. Mm. What you see, I mean, that. But camp if practices, it's open, camp yeah. practices are open. If it's open, I mean, but, when I covered the Cowboys, you just went to the whole you, workout. But you know what, Jalen? Trust me, you played that position. I don't care how great you are. You're gonna get beat in practice. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get beat in the game. It's okay. You can't become so sensitive that everything that the media tweets, you have to try and refute. Just go out there because at the, at the end of the day, you know you one of the top two or three corners sure. in all of football. Yeah. Don't get so caught up. That guy's in the NFL, too, for a reason, Skip. Mm -hmm. They didn't just grab the guy off the street and say, let me see you run around against Jalen mm -hmm. Ramsey. That guy can play. There's a reason Although he's I, there. I didn't really get to see him play at LSU very much because they didn't have anybody who could throw. Exactly. But, and, and, but that's my point. And people get so caught up, oh, he beat such and such. That guy's in the NFL. Mm. They didn't grab him out the stands and say, mm. put a uniform on, let's see if you yep. can play football. Mm. These guys have been playing football all of their life. They get paid, too. <laughs> I skip his true story. Mike asked me, like, with Shannon, you got to beat that guy on that route. Mike, like, Shanahan. Mike Shanahan, my head coach. Yep. I said, Mike, you know what? He looking at me like, what? I said, they pay his ass, too. Mm. You're not the only one that pay players here. He mm. get paid, too. He's in the league for a reason. Mm. Jalen, okay. don't get caught up in all that where he got... Bro, you, know you will get beat. Jalen, just go play. And if you play the way you played last year, when the real games start, there's not much anybody skip, can say. But, skip, but you know how corners are. Mm -hmm. They're the divas of the defense. They They're going to talk. Well. Just like the receivers. They're going to talk. You just accept that. Now, Time was one of the few guys that didn't say a whole lot. Time, did, I mean, he talked about he got all these flashy just things. The media, he did. Yeah, yeah. He but, had his battles. But he didn't talk about what, I, what he's going to do to certain guys. No. Nope. You just, when you... Cut the tape on. Mm. And you saw what he did. Well, I saw what Jalen didn't do <laughs> against Tom Brady in the AFC Championship game because in the fourth quarter, Tom Brady yeah. threw another party, 138 yeah. yards yeah, against had... the Saxonville defense. Yeah, they did. I don't know how much Jalen was responsible. He and his Well, he got, a, he, got a, he got a big pass interference call. Well, he did. It, ha it happens. It, it, if you play this game long enough, Skip, mm -hmm. no matter what position you play, if you play an offensive lineman, there's going to be a defensive lineman that run by you. If you play defensive line, there's going to be an offensive line that gets you an offensive mm -hmm. lineman that gets you off the ball. Mm -hmm. There's a reason that these guys are here. It's not like when you're at your old school where you're Ohio State playing Buffalo. No, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. <laughs> these guys are everybody. There was a reason Shannon Sharp caught only one ball a game because all the rest of the time he would just shut down. No, man. no, no, no. That was late my career, Skip. Oh, okay. No, early on. Oh, mm -hmm. big, oh, oh, big game. They just called me big game. Big game. Oh. Big game. Then I got to be one play. Big oh. play. Oh, well, big game. Oh, big game. Mm. They didn't want to see big game because I would go get 13. I get 12 for 156. Should the Cowboys be running Dak Prescott? Sorry, mm. Shannon. We can talk more <laughs> about that later. In preseason, we'll discuss that next. No mercy.
Well, Dak Prescott only played one series in the Cowboys preseason opener last week, but he completed all three of his passes, including a TD to rookie Michael Gallup. Dak also had a 12-yard run, which may have been a surprise that he's running in the preseason. But Jason Garrett said there aren't restrictions on Dak and added, quote, we tell him to go play. Shannon, should Jason Garrett be okay with Dak running in the preseason? Yes, he's a football player. Um, it's not like they're calling – Skip, they're not calling run for him like Carolina called for Cam. Quarterback ISO, quarterback power. He's going through his progression. Okay, one, two, dang, my check down's not even there. Okay, let me get out of the pocket. Now, I got my eyes downfield. Okay, there's nothing there. I'm taking off and run. I have no problem with that. His legs are an asset. They're a benefit. That's part of who Dak Prescott is. I don't want Dak or I don't want the Cowboys to make the mistake like RG3 made. His legs were one of his, his greatest assets. Then all of a sudden he wanted to be something that he totally wasn't. Mm. Dak, I, Dak, I believe, understands that I got these legs. I'm going to get out of harm's way. I'm not looking to run every time there's not a play there. I'm going to keep my eyes downfield in case something comes open, as we saw against Arizona last year, Skip, where he threw the ball over the top to Bryce Butler. That's what he's capable of doing. But I have no problem with a guy playing football. He's playing football. He went through his progression. There's nothing there. He took off and got a first down. Mm. Okay. Call quarterback ISO or quarterback power. I got a problem with that. Mm. But him playing football, I got no problem with that. Mm. I got a problem with your conclusion to this because I want to see quarterback power and quarterback ISO. I want to see read option. This is now Dak. Prescott's team, and I was very happy to hear Jason Garrett even quickly dismiss any concerns he has about Dak's health. And I got to knock on this wood very hard over here <laughs> before I say this. Dak Prescott is a gamer. He's a baller. He wants to play football his way, and his way is to occasionally run with the football. Yeah, okay. He can roll out much more than he did last year. He can run way more read options. I said over here yet last year, I don't know if you remember, I'm just pounding the desk. You have to run read options because if you can establish Dak Prescott at six feet, two inches by 250 pounds as an occasional force of a runner, just occasional, I'm not saying every other play, just occasional, this offense is going to be very difficult to defend because you know and I know they're going to see a lot of eight in the box, eight men fly to Zeke. Well, right? well Skip, they don't really call it, they don't call it zone read anymore. They call it RPO, run yeah. pass option. Okay, so but, you but, will see a lot of that. Okay, but it's not even, I'm taking the pass out of it. It's still <laughs> yeah. the zone read to me because I'm saying. Oh, you want to run, you want a run run. Like ride and decide, yeah. you know, like, yeah. like Tebow ran with yeah. uh, Willis McGahee. Willis you know, stick it in. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Read the defensive end, yank it, and go with it. Skip if it. it's there, if you if you can get seven or eight yards and get down, I am fine with it. But that. here's the thing, team. What teams started to do, they said we'll let the running back have ten yards, fifteen yards. Terrell Suggs just wanted a shot at your quarterback. Von Miller just wanted a shot at the quarterback. Is that what you want? Okay. Dak Prescott is just about as big as Terrell Suggs is. Yeah, he is, though, Skip. Is. But let me tell you what they're not used to doing, taking that kind of punishment like a running back. You don't want that guy. And see, that's what broke – that's what got rid of the zone read. Okay, yes, that's fine. Oh, it looks good. But when they started – because you got to realize that quarterback's a runner. He never takes a step back. So he's always a runner. So I can hit him even after he gives the ball up. Mm. Do you realize who he's riding and deciding with? I just, the best running back mm -hmm. in football. So Mr. Suggs and others is going to have to make a big decision. I, yeah, I'll let Zeke go. I'll just let him go because I want a shot at the quarterback. I'll let C.J. Mosley. I'll let Luke Keekley. Okay. I'll let them worry about that. Mm. But in the meantime, I want my defensive ends. I want you to put that helmet mm. up, under, up under Dak Prescott's chin. Mm. That's what I want you to do. Because remember, Skip, I he's a runner. I want Dak to put his helmet up under Terrell's Okay. Chin. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. You, you see yeah. how that works yeah. out. Well, I'll see how it works <laughs> out. He's 250 pounds, and he is solid. Skip. I'm t I understand that. Got to knock on wood. But Keep, quarter you. You. quarterbacks are not built to take that kind of punishment down in and down out. I got to tell you, this man is big and strong and has underrated acceleration because it's effortless acceleration. I'm not saying he's a blazer. He's not RG3. He's not Lamar Jackson. He's not those guys. 
but they're not him either because RG3, as much as I loved him, was a little willy. Oh, he's frail, yeah. He's a little frail, yeah. a little fragile, a little, you know. Yeah, what, he was 205 yeah. pounds, maybe? Yeah, maybe, and he, he just couldn't figure out how to slide. He's so athletic, but he couldn't figure out how to put feet first and mm -hmm. slide because the game is rigged for right. the quarterback. If you get down, it's over. The play's right. over. Slide, right. everybody has to stop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Dak Prescott. How many times did we see him roll out last year? Not nearly enough. Because when he did roll out, as we saw in the Arizona game, I don't know if we have that play, but remember the throw to Bryce Butler? Yeah, it's a yeah. Roll out. Mm -hmm. you know, it's yeah, and you, and you like that, Skip. You like the you like it. Yeah. You go through your progression. Here okay, go. one, the two, the That's three. There's nothing yeah. there. Okay, yeah. throw the ball. Yeah. But you know what? He is very accurate on the run. So do now this is RPO. This is run pass option where you roll him out and, and if it's not there. Just let him run for five or six or seven yards. That works. That works to me. If you notice all the quarterbacks that that was a heavy, they, they got the, the zone read. Cam, they're trying to graduate him from that. Russell Wilson, they graduated him from that. I don't know if the guy's already in a graduate class and they didn't do a whole lot of that, why you want to remediate him mm -hmm. and put him back in that situation. Skip, Dak Prescott is at a situation now you, they put a lot on his plate. Not, not, well, I shouldn't say a lot. They put enough on his plate his rookie year. He showed he can handle it. They added a little more, but they took Zeke away from him. So now he has Zeke back. I think you start to put more on his plate as, as far as passing the football. I'm not saying you don't say that. Look, we're going to make you a purely pocket passer. That's not what he is. Mm -hmm. That's not what he's ne ever going to be. Mm -hmm. But... But to put him in harm's way by taking unnecessary punishment by zone reading him, I'm telling you, Skip, mm -hmm. defensive ends, they love that. Okay. Well, do they love quarterback draws? I don't know. I'll take a quarterback draw every well, once in a while. Well, here's the thing. It, yeah. it all depends. Like, you, you might see a quarterback draw, Skip, mm -hmm. if it's, you know, say you're uh, at the five-yard yeah, line. Third and goal. Yeah, yeah. Five. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're going to see that. Oh, something yeah. like that. Oh, yeah, I got no problem with it. Mm -hmm. It's just like in the middle of the field. If it's third down, you know, you, you're trying to keep them. There will be times that they will call that. But that should be few and far between. Mm. Dak Prescott is the quarterback. Let him hand the ball off. He doesn't need to come out of the game with eight, nine carries. Mm -hmm. Well, well, you're going to see a very diversified attack here. You're no, going mean, to see one that's very difficult to defend. Zeke goes for eight. Then it's throw to Michael Gallup. Then it's throw to Cole Beasley. Then Dak runs for eight. And then all of a sudden he throws it to Alan Hearns. Then he gives it back to Zeke. And all of a sudden you're, the defense is just on its heels. What, wait a minute. How do we stop all well, you these? Got, you got a headset on. You over there calling plays. Yeah, if it was only that easy. Yeah, I could call plays for this offense. Yeah, hand the ball to Zeke mm -hmm. 35 times no, a game. I'd be handing it to Dak about eight times a game. You hand the ball to yeah, Dak mm -hmm. eight I'm times a game. call his number. Yeah. You know what? You will. Mm -hmm. You let Dak run the ball eight times a game, and within two years, you know what Dak will be? Mm. Over here. Three. You know, he'll, be, he'll be right here with us. He'll be playing with a bunch of guys at the YMCA. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because exactly. yeah. they will break, they will break him know. up. He's too big. He's too strong. He's a playmaker. He's a momentum builder. If you don't, if you don't mind me asking. Two years ago, how did they go? They went as he went. Let me ask you a question. Yep. Is he bigger and stronger than Earl Campbell? No, no, but they broke him down. Okay, but Earl Campbell just got hammered between the tackles play after play. What do you think, play. Skip, what do you think they'll do? How many times can he take somebody putting their helmet up on his chin through the course of a game? Well, I hope none. Exactly. Yeah. But that's what's going to happen if you run that zone read because that's what they tell the defensive ends now because he's not a quarterback. He's a runner, and I can do whatever I want to the mm. runner. You know that. You know, if even twice a game he gets loose on, on just a pure zone read where he pulls it back yeah. from Zeke and goes off tackle and nobody's home and he gets eight yards and gets well, down, it just drives a defense crazy. Well, now with the new helmet rule, you, yeah. the new helmet rule, you yeah. can't put that helmet on anybody. Yeah. So, you know what, Skip? They might go back and let him run. Now, right. I mean, these numbers are about to be off the chain. Okay. I mean, I watch guys, I'm like, the dude textbook mm. formed him up in the Arizona game, and they threw a flag. Mm. So now we're about to have guys, Skip, that are just mm. guys, mm. and they're about to start throwing for four. And we've seen that over the last – because you look at all these guys, oh, this guy threw for more yards than Elway. I'm like, really, guys? Mm. And you look at the way they're throwing the football around now, you actually think these guys are better than those guys, mm. but it's just a sign of the time, Skip. You know, hey, so – that mm. might happen with the new helmet rule. You can't put the helmet on anybody. That's right. Thank you for closing my case. <laughs> and, Mr. Sharp, I got bad news for you. What? The DAC attack is back.
I'm still picturing Thank Skip O'Hare calling dunk. plays for the Cowboys. The dink and dunk is back, huh? Dak and dunk. Right? Yeah. I'll Dak take some of that. Speaking of another Zeke. quarterback, are we ready to call Sam Darnold a franchise QB? We'll discuss that next. No mercy. August 23rd on Fox number one pick Baker Mayfield takes on the defending champion Philadelphia Eagles in a preseason showdown. It's the Eagles and Browns August 23rd at 8 Eastern on Fox or stream all the action live on the Fox Sports app. So speaking of rookie QB, Sam Darnold looked really good in his Jets debut on Friday night. He was the third quarterback in the game and went 13 for 18 with a touchdown pass in the win. And yesterday, Darnold got most of the reps in practice, which could mean he's on track to be the week one starter. But head coach Todd Bowles said, quote, I'm not going to jump to any conclusions after one game. Shannon, how impressive was good old Sam Darnold? Well, I'll concur with uh, Todd Bowles says. I'm not going to jump to any conclusions, but I did thought he played well. I did think he played well. Um, Skip, I thought he moved, he moved a little better than I thought he could. I thought he threw the ball accurately on the move better than I thought he could. I thought he just had command. I thought his poise, his presence in, uh, in the huddle, you can tell that he, he's a leader. And, and you like what you saw from him. Uh, again, it's the preseason. And, um, but you, there, when I look at the preseason, Skip, I'm looking at a guy, okay, let me see if, if there's anything that I can, I can say it jumps off, the, jumps off at me that I can say, you know what, okay, I see. With given some time, right set of circumstances, this guy can be really good. He struck me as a guy that had that kind of ability, Skip. The way he can move, like I said, I didn't think he can move as well as he did in and out of the pocket, and I definitely didn't think he was going to be as accurate as he was throwing the ball in the move. Mm. But he showed me something. And it, it, although this is preseason, we'll see as it goes along, Teams will start the game plan a little bit more. But it's going to be very, very interesting to see, Skip, who gets the reps the third game. Mm. Because you can't give McCown, Bridgewater, and uh, Sam Donald mm. the same amount of reps. Somebody's going to take the first, you know, first two quarters against a, a, a scripted mm. team. Now, that means it looks like Teddy mm. Bridgewater will probably get moved on because I think he probably – the thing is, what, what concerns you probably about Teddy Skip is that the injury history. He did miss two years because of the knee, and there's a concern because of concussions. Josh McCown has been in the league since 2000. People might not know that, Skip. He's been in the league since 2002. He's going into his 17th season. Mm -hmm. Never taken a team to the Super Bowl. I mean, Super Bowl, to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So this is why, and people are like, well, Shannon, if you think Sam Darnold's in line to start, why not Baker Mayfield? I think their situations are entirely oh, different. you reading Twitter again. No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just mm. saying because I've, mm. I've said I think Tyrod should mm. start at least opening and, and move forward. Mm. But we, we still have three games to go. You, well, you said Tyrod uh, uh, Baker shouldn't start, mm. but why Sam? That's a good question, Shannon. Why? Because I think the thing is, is that Tyrod has proven he can take a team to the playoffs, where the other two guys have not proven that. Mm. Josh McCown has had seven, had 16 years prior to show he could take a team. Teddy Bridgewater can't stay healthy long enough to get a team into the playoffs. So I think those situations. So he got the Vikings the playoffs. So I believe. won the game. I believe. Yeah, he did. Uh, mm -hmm. What was that? Uh, Owen Blair. Mm -hmm. When the, walk, the kicker missed that field goal. Blair Witch Project. Yeah. yeah. Stop, Skip. That's, that, that's harsh. You, being, you just being nasty now. You remember that? I, I don't want to mm. remember it, though. But, Skip, it was I, cold. It was so I, bad. I just think Darnold and what he's shown, mm -hmm. and I now, guess. obviously, they feel more comfortable because he's taken a lot of the reps. So that tells you what they think of him. Yep. He's the last quarterback to sign, but he's the first quarterback to take the majority of the reps. Mm. So I think that should give you an indication of what they think of this mm. young man, and he's on line to start week one. Mm. So, I fear that the Jets fans in our control room right now might just cut my microphone. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, I don't know. You know? <laughs> Ely, you know? <sighs> I really like Sam Darnold as a young man. Jenny's been around him. Yeah. He's really a good young man. Mm -hmm. High intangibles. But I do think, even though I'm not surprised that he played very well the other night, I think in the long run he will ultimately disappoint Jets fans because the guy I saw, over, especially over last year, but really it's two years, mm -hmm. a year and something plus, right? Mm -hmm. I saw a guy who is such a good kid that he tries too hard, and the higher the stakes get, the more the expectations rise, he tries too hard, 
and makes mistakes trying too hard. And I saw that last year because it was very interesting to me. The two new New York stars, Saquon and Sam Darnold, both became almost household names off one big game played right here in the L.A. area, which was the Rose Bowl of the, you know, going back two two years years ago, ago, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And in that game, Sam Darnold threw for 453 yards and five touchdowns. Like a Rose Bowl record, isn't it? Yeah, that's unbelievable. And Saquon ran for 194 yards and a couple of touchdowns and caught five for 55 and had a couple of big kickoff returns. They were sensational. Mm-hmm. They arrived. That was a coming out party for both of those players and launched them into their final years of college football. Correct. Remember, Sam Darnold was Heisman Trophy front runner, front runner. right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And he had a pretty miserable year last year because mm-hmm. he threw 13 picks and he had eight fumbles lost, which led the nation. Most of it came from trying too hard to make the throw, hanging on to the ball too long, not just just let it go, just let it go. Right. Live, live to play another play. And his QBR wound up 38th in the nation, which is pretty terrible for, for his status. Not going good, in. yeah. You know? And Baker Mayfield, of course, led the nation in QBR. And I'm looking at some of these games that I remember. The, let's start with the Ohio State game and the Cotton Bowl. He, he was just miserable in that game. Oh, they, they got him. They got him good. <laughs> and then the loss at Notre Dame, low QBR. The game against Utah at home, only a 48 QBR on 0 to 100 scale. And then that game at Washington State, was that on a Friday night? I can't remember. Mm. Did you go to that one? You did that one. I can't remember. But it was a night game, and I'm watching it. And Sam Darnold just came all apart, and Washington State upset USC. Mm -hmm. Well, I fear that's going to be his pattern because if he is the starter on day one, you know, for for the Jets, which would be fine. I I don't have any problem with that. I just think he's one of those try-hard guys who gets a little panicky and a little over-anxious and it'll be hard for him to grow into some poise that I didn't see from him in college. Well, to uh, to agree with you, normally guys that have habits of turning the football over in college, they bring that with them to the NFL. Mm. Jameis Winston still has not figured how not to turn take how not to turn the football over in the worst opportune of times. And you know what? I was a big Jameis fan coming out, or not not huge, but I, I thought he should have been the first right. overall pick. Right. I, I seconded that emotion. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I'm about to give up on that one yeah. because history is repeating. In he, pro football. He, he turns the ball you know? over. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see another guy skip, not to go too far up, uh, uh, up the topic, mm-hmm. Deshaun Watson. He had a lot of turnovers in his last two years, especially that last year. Mm-hmm. He had eight, he had what, eight in five games. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see if he can take care of the mm-hmm. football. But I, I think given what we know now with the way he played, and like I said, you know, well, clearly, Todd Bowles, is, Todd Bowles is not heeding his own advice because he says he's not going to put too much into one game. Yet, after that game, he's taking the majority of the reps yeah. with the one. So, clearly, he's putting more into the game than you and I would have put into the game because it's still a preseason. You want to see some things, mm-hmm. but just stay on course. There's an opportunity. There's another game coming up, what, Thursday or Friday this week. You get another opportunity to take a look at it. Mm-hmm. You can see, you can always, you know, you know what, hey, let Josh McCown or whomever's going to start, let them go a se- let them go two or three series. Okay, Sam, you take it from here. So you, get, you, you will get an opportunity to see. But the third game, for me, will be the telltale in who's going to be week one starter. This kid, Sam Darnold, is, is the number one candidate to get wrecked this year if they throw him into the fire too mm-hmm. quickly because he gets so down on himself so quickly that I'm not sure he could bounce back. Again, I know they need to give their fans some hope and, and something new and fresh to root for, but you got to be careful because the, the team around him will not be great. Right. I, I don't know what they're going to be. Well, well, I don't think they're going to be very the good. The thing is, Skip, they traded up three spots yeah. to move up into a position to yeah. take a quarterback. Yeah. Now, I think they're very, very happy with Sam Darnold, but they thought, okay, Cleveland's going to possibly take a quarterback. So if they don't take Darnold, we might still be in play. But the Giants – could have easily taken a quarterback and not batted an eye. Mm-hmm. Then what do you do? So I think they got Teddy Bridgewater as far as insurance because if Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold are, are gone, now what do we do? Are, you, are we going to take Josh? Are we going to really take Josh Allen here? Mm-hmm. I don't think really think they were sold on Josh Rosen. I don't think they were. They could have been, Skip. And so I think Teddy Bridgewater was an insurance plan if they didn't get one of the two guys that they wanted because mm-hmm. they, they only could move up to third. Yeah. So clearly, you were sold on just about all of them, right? Yeah. You had to be sold on a bunch of guys or right. you, sh- you can't risk right. that. 
Right. So I, I think once Darnold fell in there, they're like, mm. okay, thank you. I think they were happy with that. Ab- absolutely. Mm. But like I said, I mean, Todd, Coach Todd Bowles says, you know, I'm not going to get all carried away after one game. Mm. But come Sunday, mm. he's taking the majority of the reps with, with the first team. So clearly, Skip, he got excited about one game. He's got a good head on his shoulders, mm-hmm. though. I think that he's – I mean, you bring up the mistakes he made, those turnovers, and but his supporting cast, there were injuries. I mean, there was a lot more mm-hmm. that was going on with that team. Well, that supporting cast, right, what he got right now. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I think he may, may miss USC pretty soon. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Join us again at the same time tomorrow morning, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports 1. Of one.